way. Begin, begin. Hi everyone, this is Muthi, research associate from DHM Naturals. Uh, our project topic, uh, optimization of power extraction from ginger powder. Uh, our company, uh, DHM Naturals, is a natural product startup. The company founded in September last year, and the company located in Research and Innovation Lambda College, Sarnia. And our company team member, a Daniel Process Chemist and Hardik Analytical Chemist. And uh, main overview of our project, we are just changing the pH of extraction, extraction solvent. Uh, we use the ethanol and we change the ethanol pH to acidic and basic level. And we perform the extraction of ginger powder. And uh, we will, in the end of the, in this presentation, we will give what results we got from this project. And uh, Audit uh, will explain. Uh, next slides. So, good afternoon, them and all of my friends. Uh, my name is Hamid Prajapati, and uh, now I'm going to discuss about uh, like first the content, uh, like introduction, and uh, what was we uh, expected and what we got, and also like uh, what kind of problem we faced. So, firstly, what is a natural health product? So, it's a kind of uh, so kind of vitamins, minerals, and uh, you can see it can be in uh, any kind of form. Uh, it can be medicine, or also it can be in liquid form. And uh, there are a uh, like couple of benefits of natural health products. Uh, firstly, there are uh, uh, not more uh, side effects as compared to allopathic, uh, allopathic medicines. And also we can get that uh, without prescription, but uh, it's better to purchase with prescription because everyone has different uh, biological system. So sometime uh, uh, people got uh, side effects. <coughs> and uh, like so there are uh, lots of natural products, uh, aloe vera, turmeric, and uh, ginger. So why we choose ginger? Because there are more than 400 uh, uh, ingredients on uh, ingredients. Uh, like uh, ginger oil, sorghum, and many more. Uh, if you ever tried ginger, so you know the spicy spiciness taste. So it's because of uh, ginger oil. And uh, like if we applied heat to ginger, or uh, if it's dry, so the ginger oil converts into sorghum. Like uh, this one is our like main product. We uh, what we extracted. And uh, you know the oil too because of uh, this it. Uh, Oil converts uh, into sorghum, and uh, the sorghum is uh, one of the most uh, active ingredients uh, in ginger. So, uh, like uh, there are uh, uh, many benefits uh, and for anti cancer and uh, anti inflammation. Uh, if I talk about the research goals, so as uh, uh, we completed isolation, purification, and uh, like uh, uh, we got that what we expected. Not 100 percent, but uh, we got uh, 70 to 80 percent. So we would like to like transfer this to on a big scale. Like firstly, we have to try on a, like a physical body if it's uh, ha helpful or not. Because like if there is a company who uh, makes uh, same medicine, so it doesn't like mean that they have a same same effect. Uh, like in budget, uh, we didn't use like much chemicals or any. Uh, raw material, we just need uh, ginger powder and uh, just three chemicals. So, like mostly, man spent 500 bucks on HPLC, so our uh, total budget is 650. And uh, this was our like the basic timeline because we didn't uh, think that uh, we will get any issue. We, uh, it's just uh, straightforward, like uh, on a couple of weeks, uh, we did data collection and uh, extraction. But uh, this one is updated guidelines because on the first week uh, we just did the uh, extraction with water, and uh, on the second week we did uh, with just a normal ethanol. We didn't do any changes with that. But uh, then on the third week we have to decrease the pH. But uh, uh, we we have faced some issue with pH meter. We tried three to four different pH. Uh, 
Uh, then uh, after that we used the uh, new pH meter and uh, we got uh, our result and we completed our aperture. Uh, then also like we faced some issue with HPLC on last couple of uh, weeks, but uh, also we like completed that. And uh, on the last one we did data analysis and paper writing. So then we will discuss from here. Thank you. Good morning everyone, actually good afternoon. I will be telling about you, uh, about extraction and evaporation process. First, uh, let me tell you what is extraction. It's a simple technique to separate component from the mixture. Like for example, we usually uh, perform these types of uh, experiments only like at home also. If we are making a tea or a coffee, there is also extraction process. Like uh, we are uh, boiling any coffee or tea in water to extract uh, caffeine and uh, some flavors from that. So this is a simple basic explanation of extraction process. Uh, we usually isolate uh, required components and uh, the components which we do not need, we can throw or we can do whatever we want. Uh, mostly or uh, it is widely used, uh, the extraction process is widely used in oil and gas extract, uh, oil and gas industry, in mining industries. Uh, like uh, we have read in our petrochemical course, uh, the extraction is widely used to ex extract uh, different uh, things from petroleum by using different processes. So uh, there are some major techniques which are uh, used nowadays. These are some of the major techniques, uh, although there are more, much more techniques which has been in use these days, but these are some of the major uh, techniques which we uh, use in industry, in laboratory for extraction purposes. Most common is distillation. As I have told you like uh, that uh, example uh, of tea. It simply we are uh, boiling something in the water, and second one is solid phase extraction. Here we use uh, chemical and physical properties to extract and uh, uh, separate the different materials. Super critical fluid extraction. Here we use CO2 and uh, temperature to extract. Then uh, the method we are using is Toxlet extraction. This is the method which we are using. I will tell you later why we are using the so soft extraction method. Then we have ultrasound also. Uh, here we use sound waves or sound energy to extract uh, our products. Then we have acid base extraction also. Here we use uh, the change in uh, the acidity and basicity. We can't use that because our main purpose uh, of uh, our project depends on uh, playing with uh, uh, acidic or basic components. Soap slat extraction. So uh, let me introduce you with the soap slat extraction. The soap slat extraction is a process which ensures intimate contact of sample matrix with extraction. Here, there is a uh, contact of solvent and uh, our compounds or materials which we are using. It was invented in 1879 by French von Soxlet. It was originally ex, uh, uh, invented for the extraction of lipids from the solids. There are three main sections in Soxlet extraction. First is percolator uh, in which boiler and reflux uh, is counted and uh, second one is symbol. This is a thick filter paper which we use to put our sample. And uh, the next is siphon mechanism. Uh, I will tell you in next. So uh, as I've told you that I will tell you why we use soap slag extraction only. So here are some reasons. It is uh, very simple and clear. When we perform our uh, experiment we can clearly see that how it is going because it is uh, we can see it through naked eyes 
It is very simple and anyone can do it. It is a continuous process. We can just start it once and the cycle goes on for like we can complete as many cycles as we want. We don't need to touch it. We just need to keep an eye that whether it is uh, running properly or not. Then low flow, uh, like we need here, uh, it's like we are not wasting our, uh, we can use our solvent again after using uh, this uh, uh, solvent, sorry, this surplus extraction. We can use, because uh, we will treat it with a rotary vapor and we can use that uh, solvent again. Then uh, it has a high extraction efficiency. So this is our apparatus. Then uh, here I will be telling you that how it works. So uh, this is a round bottom flask and this is a heater. We need to connect this heater with a current and uh, we need to control the current as well. If we increase the current, the heat will increase and the process of evaporation increase. From here, uh, there is a timber. Yeah, this is a timber, the thick uh, uh, filter paper. It is a type of filter paper only. We need to place our sample inside this and we need to start it from here. We need to, uh, we just have to uh, start the heating process. Then uh, the, uh, the solvent evaporates and it comes in contact with this uh, condens uh, condenser. The condenser is connected with the cold water because when this steam comes in contact with uh, the cold water, then it uh, falls down uh, to this chamber where we uh, have our sample. So uh, it is connected here. When it comes to a point of reflux, then it reflects back to uh, the round bottom flask. And this cycle keeps uh, uh, on, this cycle will be continue as many times as we want. Uh, we have modified our pH. This is the main component of our uh, experiment actually, because our uh, whole experiment depends on pH modification <coughs> only. We have done, uh, uh, we have uh, seen uh, many research, they have changed the uh, temperature, but then we have decided to modify the pH, so we can optimize our method of extraction. We were doing something different, that's why first we did not any change in pH change, we did not any change in our uh, extraction and we, do, we did HPLC with the same uh, extract we got. Then we changed the pH and modified to uh, pH 4 and make it basic and then uh, we got some results as well. Then same, we made it uh, basic and we got some different results. So uh, this, this is also a main component, although we had uh, faced many problems, we, <coughs> this was the main, mo most basic we used, then uh, we bought this one, <coughs> this was uh, some like it was complex, but this was the most complex and most helpful for us. We have wasted lots of time on changing these uh, pH meters as well. This was the, we can, I, I can say, this was the major problem we faced uh, in our experiment, changing, always keep on changing our pH. And uh, in the last, this was also not working. Then we used pH history also. So uh, we need something like this, because we need to, we need something which control the temperature also while uh, doing the pH checking. Now I will tell you about evaporation. So we will start with the beginning only. What is evaporation? The process that uh, changes liquid to water, liquid to vapor state. Okay, uh, this is very simple. It, it is like basic only. Uh, it is usually used to remove solvent from the solution. Everybody knows. Uh, like for example, for drying our clothes, we uh, usually use dryers here, but uh, if uh, people
the north in India, we usually dry our clothes in the sun. Okay, so uh, that is possible with the help of evaporation process. So we used rota vapor for our evaporation process. Why rota vapor only? We use rota vapor because it is very fast. As compared to uh, other methods, it is very fast. And it is very easy process. Anyone can use rota vapor if he uh, just read the manual. It avoids, this is the most important point, it avoids thermal decomposition of sample. If uh, there is any, uh, if you perform our experiment and there is a thermal decomposition occurs, then there is no benefit of performing that experiment. So this is the most important point. We need our extraction as we, uh, because this is the most important thing, our extraction. So uh, in rota vapor, we need less temperature than the boiling point of compound. For example, the boiling point of ethanol is somewhere around uh, 79 or 78, but here we use temperature around like 45 degree or 45 to 50 degree, which was working very well. And the process is done under control condition, like we can control, sterilize the uh, pressure, we can control the temperature as well with rotor vapor. So uh, this is the uh, rota vapor and uh, I can explain you the complete process like how to use this rota vapor, how we were using this rota vapor actually. First we need to uh, connect it, we need to switch it on from there, this is a bathtub, uh, but the bathtub start from here and from here uh, we can start the rotation process. This is a key uh, thing through which we can uh, control the rotation speed and uh, from here we can control the temperature and uh, we can connect this with a give vacuum. Our laboratory have different uh, uh, channels which are given for the vacuum and we can connect with them. From here we can sterilize the vacuum by using this thing. We can uh, Rotate it and sterilize the vacuum. If we uh, increase vacuum, it can splash out and come with a solvent or solute. So this is also uh, one problem <coughs> we need to avoid. And this is the condenser. We can connect it with the cold water and it keep on condensing the solvent. A two minute warning. Two minutes left. Extraction and uh, evaporation then is analysis. Everyone knows what is the general analysis. Uh, this is two types, qualitative and quantitative. Uh, in the analytical industry, people using different kind of uh, instruments. Uh, we specially use HPLC because in this particular instrument, we can identify as well as quantify each component from a mixture. Uh, we can identify the compound based on the retention time of the result and for the quantification based on the peak light or peak area we can find the quantity quantity of the compound and uh, these are the HPLC methodology for the instruments we use AGLens 1260 infinity 2 and the software we use control panel uh, in the HPLC we majorly use uh, like uh, mobile phase stationary space and uh, we need to control injection volume temperature flow rate and uh, as well as data. In HPLC, we can use different type of data. For example, uh, a diode array, array data or UV visible data. Uh, this is how we prepare the sample preparation. PM0 of uh, ginger extract and uh, VRF50 ml of methanol. And then we filter using syringe filter and we collected in HPLC sample vial. Uh, we perform with the manual injector, but in the industry, uh, companies using auto sampler with the HPLC. Uh, this is for HPLC results for uh, reference standard. In the seventh minute, we can clearly see the peaks. This is for sample peaks. Uh, here, you can see how much amount uh, present in this uh, particular extraction. Uh, this three for uh, this one for low pH change, this one for basic, and that one for acidic level. 
this is our final HTLC result. For the reference standard, we took like a 410 PPM in the home. Uh, we got like a 410.750 microgram per ml. Uh, it's like a, almost, it's like an exact value we got. From the sample one, a no we got like a 179 microgram per ml. Uh, in sample two, we modified two pH level to basics and we got like a 228 microgram per ml. And sample three, we changed to a peak level and we got like a 268.552 microgram per ml. So based on the HPLC results, you can clearly see uh, if you change to uh, pH level to acidic, it clearly shows like a 49.27 percentage of the increase in the extraction yield. And if we increase the pH to basic level, you know the ethanol pH is 7.3, it's like almost neutral. If you increase to basic level, uh, we can clearly see like a 26.87 percentage of the increase in the extraction yield. For the future growth, what we need to do is uh, repeatability of experiments. Like uh, we performed one more extraction and the operation for the repeatability, but uh, due to a lot of issues with the HPLC problem, we are not able to perform that analysis. So we need to do repeatable experiment and the sample degradation as well. We need to check about the sample degradation in uh, HPLC analysis because after like uh, one month of period, we are not getting any fix for standard solution. That's all, thank you. All right, I'll start with a question. Don't close up your slides, <coughs> but for now I'm, I'm good. So you mentioned that your sample preparation was uh, 50 milligrams per mil. What did you uh, base? 50 milligrams per 50, uh, 50 ml. 50 ml, all right, 50 ml. So what did you base that? choice on? Uh, based on the research paper, initially we tried with uh, 20 milligram with 50 ml, but uh, we are not able to measure the 20 milligram accurately in the analytical balance. So we just increased to 50 milligram. So you didn't use your expected shogo or gingerol initial uh, concentration to, to uh, select that you just selected it from the the paper oh uh, we don't select exactly like that for the analysis purpose we just uh, take like a random uh, quantity for the sample preparation because for the <coughs> standard it's like uh, they did like a different conservation but for the sample analysis we don't uh, use like any specific thing Okay. Questions from the floor? So what do you guys have used for changing pH? Like what uh, do you for use changing for pH to increase the pH, we used sodium hydroxide to reduce the pH to acidic level. We used uh, HCl. Anyone? Go ahead. You guys use oxidant extraction, right? So you guys think like uh, any other type of extraction you use and you can get like better result, like super critical or anything else? No, actually our extraction is very good. We are struggling with uh, only an L. Yeah, you can clearly see based on the HPLC results, if you just change the pH modification, if you change to oxidic, you can clearly see like a 47 percentage increase in the extraction yield. So I think that's really good one. What more could you have done if you had more time? Um, maybe I can do like a repeatability. You know, uh, I tried to repeat the same experiment with no PHA, but I'm not able to analyze with the HPLC. <coughs> Like at the end of final product? No, it does not affect anything. Like 
how when you are adding in the SQL and Azure like still in Just there. like uh, we don't, uh, we are just adding like a few drops, so it will not affect in the final product. Anything else? Okay. Uh, remember, and I forgot to remind you, but I'll remind you for the, for the final presentations, take turns answering questions. Murthy, I think you answered almost all of them. So let the others take some questions. All right, so five minutes to um, finish the uh, evaluation if you need it. <laughs>